<laughs> All right, we're rolling. Cool, action. Hey, so um, hi, I'm Lisa. This is the Mark Olympia, and this is my mm -hmm. very old friend, Tony Alba. And we've been curating. This is Etta James. And Etta James. <laughs> and we've been curating shows here for the entire history of the restaurant since 2001. And um, Tony has introduced me to a whole lot of different artists. This one, maybe we'll talk about Art Brewer first, that's right behind us. Yeah, Art Brewer, unfortunately, he just passed away in the last year or so, but he is probably one of the most classic, like old school film photographers when it comes to surf. Um, he documented like the surfing shortboard revolution as well as like um, a lot of, um, I would say, legendary surfers that, that are even today revered as like, you know, some of the most important people in the history of surfing. Uh, one of them, the photo that's right behind Lisa is Mr. Pipeline, which is Jerry Lopez. Um, Kelly Slater, 11-time world champion, who's right in the middle behind me, and the list goes on. I mean, he's just an amazing photographer that has had so much to do with recording the history of surfing. And um, I think he was introduced to me through a guy that was a mentor to me, um, Anthony Bunker Spreckles, which was, he was Clark Gable's stepson and the heir to the Spreckles Sugar Fortune, but also re related to the Spreckle Sugar Company through his, his grandfather and his father. Make a long story short, he was like a really very flamboyant surfer, um, had a very rock star image, had the money to basically back himself up because when he was 21 years old, he, he inherited like I think almost $100 million, uh, which back in that time was a lot of money. And uh, we used to travel around the world quite a bit surfing and he helped promote and manage a lot of my skateboarding endeavors because I've been a professional skateboarder since I was 16. And when I was 19, he basically like helped train, manage, and promote me in one of the biggest competitions I was ever entered in, which was recorded on Wide World Sports. And Tony Alva's off to a very fast start. He's way out ahead of Henry Hester. Sports the whole deal, I ended up winning the overall title for that contest, which was a huge achievement for me. But to make a long story short, um, Art Brewer was a personal photographer of his for a while because Bunker could actually hire guys like that to go places like South Africa and Europe and all over the world and they would document a lot of the things that he was doing. And that's how I was introduced to Art because Art was actually with a guy named Spider Wills. They were making um, kind of a documentary film, a presentation of Bunker's life at that time. And that's how I ended up meeting Art. and becoming uh, personally involved with Bunker Spreckles. Gwen Miller, who we've done a number of different things with him, and um, I'm going to be featuring him in our next, um, or focusing on him for our next Arts Walk. Yeah, so let's talk about his work and your relationship with him. And, yeah. Well, with Wynn, he started out more as like an underground lifestyle and culture photographer. Oh, yeah, we have that, um, that work here. So. He was shooting uh, basically underground um, street gangs and car culture stuff in L.A., which a lot of it he did black and white. Um, and I think he developed even his own film and stuff. He was very, like, on hand, like, you know, technically attached to his art form as well as the fact that he just shot film as well. And he was privy to a lifestyle and a culture that a lot of guys like were no way would be invited into that the inner circle of Chicano culture because he was a young Jewish kid, you know, from the from the West Side, and here he was hanging out with these guys from South Central LA and East LA who were in a gang. Um, the gang that he highlighted a lot was called Arizona Madavia. They were a hardcore Chicano gang. Um, were definitely involved in gunplay and whatever else goes with that lifestyle back in the day. Um, it was a dangerous place to be around, but he infiltrated them as a photographer, but at the same time became one of the boys. They actually gave him a nickname, which they do in most gangs. They called him Chokey Boy. That was his, his little <laughs> name as part of the gang, where he was invited to be in intimate situations, but documenting it. So... I saw some photos done by him. They were in the Free Press, I'm pretty sure, which was a free magazine in L.A. 
uh, my friend Ray Flores was somehow related to a few different families in that area in Venice uh, through skateboarding, but also through the fact that he was also Mexican American. Ray Flores, and Flores means flowers in Spanish. Um, he introduced me to Win, but at first he told me, he goes, "You have to meet this guy, Chokey Boy. You know, his name's Win Miller." And I and I and I was like, "Oh, yeah, sure." You know, I was a pretty arrogant kind of young, you know, surfer, skateboarder kid. And, uh, and Ray goes, um, introduced me to Wynn in person and goes, um, Tony, this is my friend, Wynn Miller. He's a really good photographer. And I looked at Wynn and Ray and I go, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> so anyways, that's how we met. But, but the cool thing was he was able to back it up 100%. And, um, what I got him involved in was not only shooting me personally, what he was interested in was kind of more behind the scenes instead of just skateboarding, because that's where he came from. He came from more of this cultural documentation thing than just an action photographer. But he had really good timing and an amazing eye for action. And we ended up shooting a lot of backyard pools, tours of Europe, um, a bunch of stuff. We took it to another level when we started being around the fans, the kids, because at that age, um, being like kind of in my late teens, I was a bit of like a teen idol kind of to a lot of kids through skateboarding. And when I got around the kids and all that stuff, there was a lot of interaction, you know, and a lot of action kind of outside of the skateboarding world. And so he almost became like a personal uh paparazzi photographer in a way which was really cool and he ended up documenting pictures of me interacting with the kids as well as skateboarding or the response of the way the kids would react to me in the moment skateboarding like stuff like that and it just it just turned out to be something the way I look at it was like we had been connected through like a spiritual connection in a way you know it was just like God had put us in each other's paths so that we could interact with each other and so that we could actually show people something not only that we were enthusiastic about and felt that needed to be documented, but a moment that was like a small window in time to where it will never really ever be like that again. Well, thanks, you guys, and thanks, Tony, for talking about the work we're going to be exhibiting next week. If you get a chance, go and check out Wynn Miller's little uh, websites and stuff too. His daughters are running and, and managing his estate. Um, Lisa has been just integral in, in spreading the love that comes from his artwork. Art Brewer, got to check him out. He's just amazing. Um, Kelly Slater, 11-time world champion. I mean, just the people we've talked about. Jerry Lopez, Mr. Pipeline is a, an avid yoga advocate as well as an instructor in yoga a legend a living legend and then just it's it's me i'm just here myself actually representing surfing and skateboarding as a living legend and my name is tony alba and the mark is my home base here in olympia and it's just a priceless experience to have a friend like lisa that not only works with us through her own photography and through the friends that she's introduced me to, including the people that are documenting what you're watching right now. But, you know, we're just really connected to spreading the love and sharing with everybody. And the only thing that is just priceless in our lives that we want to share with you, regardless of like, you know, what race, creed, color you are, what religion, how old you are, it doesn't matter. Is that basically our experience is priceless. So experience, strength and hope. That's what we're here to share with you. So I hope that you can feel and hear that. And that you're open to it because that's what we got and that's what we're willing to share. So thank you.